everyone, it's Kelly here, and today I thought I would share with you a little tutorial on how I print digital elements to cardstock to use in my memory keeping projects. And for this example, I'm going to be using digital elements from the Allie Edwards uh, June Stories by the Month digital kit. Okay, so first things first. This is the paper that I like to use whenever I'm printing out something on cardstock. And this is a Nina Bright White 65 pound paper. And I just get this at Office Depot. Um, there's one not far from my house. That's where I buy my printer ink and whatever. So should be fairly e easily accessible for most people. So the weight of this paper, um, I'm not able to use really thick paper in my printer. I have an Epson uh, NX625. So I don't have the ability to use super heavy cardstock. So if you subscribe to any of Allie Edwards' other kits, so the journal cards that come in her uh, kits, you know, this is a really heavy weight. I'm not able to do that in my printer, but I really feel like this is fine for like pocket pages. Um, it takes the color really well, and um, I really, I really feel like the weight is just fine. So, Nina Bright White 65 pound cardstock. Okay, so next I'm at my computer and I uh, print all of my digital elements from Photoshop. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to come over here and create a new document. So I'm going to go to File, New, and then I'm going to select a document that is 11 inches wide by 8.5 inches tall and uh, with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. I set mine up with RGB color because it's pretty universal and standard. I'm also using 16-bit color here in this option, and then the background contents will be transparent. So basically, this is just going to be a landscape, regular size letter piece of paper. So I'm going to click on Create here. And then next, I have here a, a Finder. I work on a Mac, so I have a Finder window open, but you could also do this with Windows Explorer if you're working in Windows. And basically what I'm gonna do is drag over the journal cards and elements that I want to print out. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a couple of these, and all I'm doing is dragging and dropping directly into my Photoshop document. So I'm going to click Enter on my keyboard to sort of accept it, and then I'm just going to use my mouse to drag it up here in the corner. And I'll show you my page. Uh, when we get to the print settings, uh, this will make a little more sense, but I'm going all the way to the top and all the way to the side, right along this top and left side edge. Okay, so I think I'm also going to grab this one with the dragonflies. Once again, enter on my keyboard, use the mouse, drag it across here. By creating a landscape piece of paper, I feel like I get more prints per piece of paper, so I like to save paper wherever I can. All right, so I'm also going to go ahead and drag this uh, black card here. Every summer has a story. I'm just going to keep them all close together and this love you dad here and I'm just going to put these all together and Photoshop will help sort of align it to the grid also just a quick tip here if you hold down the command or control key and then the apostrophe key you can turn off and on this background grid sometimes I like to have it on in this case I like to have it on so I can line up all the journal cards so that's good all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is go to the folder that has the chipboard elements. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to drag them onto my document, hit enter, and then drag it over into one of the blank areas here. And then I think we'll do this one. And maybe this one. And then finally. So now I have a uh, basically a letter sized piece of paper with uh, two 4x6 journal cards and two 3x4 uh, journal cards and basically four little chipboard, using my air quotes here, uh, chipboard elements and I'm going to print them out. 
Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the print options. And before I get started with what I do, I want to let you know that the print options are most often determined by the kind of printer that you have. So, once again, the options that I'm going to share for, with you are for my Epson NX625. These may or may not work for you. Um, some of them will be, you know, obvious like paper size and things like that. But in terms of color, it just is going to take some experimentation. So this is what I have found works best for me and produces the best prints. All right, so to print, I'm going to come to File and click on Print. And here is my print my Photoshop print setting dialog box. And I'm going to start by clicking on this print settings button. All right, so this is my printer, my Epson stylus. And the first thing I'm going to do is select one. I'm only going to print one copy of this. The next one is the paper size. And I am choosing US letter. And I'm also choosing the borderless option. So if you remember, I uh, I, when I placed my journal cards, I went all the way to the outside edges. And by choosing a borderless option here, it allows me to print all the way to those options. Now, if your printer doesn't allow that, you would want to leave maybe a quarter of an inch around the perimeter so that it doesn't get cut off when you print it. But for mine, borderless works really well. Okay, so US letter borderless. The next thing that we're gonna do is come down to this color matching option, and I choose my Epson color controls. Once again, this was just a lot of experimentation. What I've found is that this is wor what works best for my setup and my printer. In paper handling, uh, we're gonna go ahead and select all pages. We only have one. I'm going to use page order normal once again. We only have one page. I'm also going to check this box uh, scale to fit paper size and once again we want to use the same uh, destination paper size that we set up in the beginning. So that's going to be the US letter borderless here. All right. The next one is cover page. We don't have one. Uh, in print settings because I chose a borderless uh, paper size, uh, I, I believe Photoshop assumes that I'm printing some type of either graphic or photo type of uh, image. So it's grayed out this plain paper option, which is fine. Um, I like to use the premium presentation paper matte option, even though I'm printing on regular bright white uh, cardstock and I'm also choosing this photo option not the best photo option and I feel like that gives me the best quality but not more than it needs to be um, this uh, by the it, it produces or lays down a, a good amount of ink so that I feel like I'm getting a nice you know vivid print but not overdoing it in a place where it's not really going to make a difference in the long run so um, I'm going to choose here this minimum expansion and basically when you're using a borderless type print setting it's like a full bleed so um, I don't want to expand it too much because then I'm just wasting ink and once again I found through experimentation minimum expansion produces the best quality print and the right size for me. All right. In color options, now before I chose the Epson color control, and it gives me a few modes here. Um, I found that this Epson Vivid works really well for me, but I also tweak it just a bit. I up the brightness, I up the contrast, and I up the saturation. And once again, I feel like produces a good quality, nice, rich print uh, for these types of graphic images. All right, output settings, the last one, we're not printing two sides, so that doesn't really apply to me at all. All right, so once I've gone through all of my settings, then I can go ahead and click on Save here, and you can see in this little preview window, this is how it's going to come out when I print it. And in the color handling, um, I chose printer, co printer color management in my print settings, so I'm going to leave that as is. And then I'm just going to leave these uh, default settings here. 
All right, so all that's left now is to go ahead and print, and then I'll meet you back at my desk for the prints. Okay, so here are my printed out journal cards. And I think you can see, it's a really nice rich black here. And this blue is really nice. Like that's a, it may not be perfect. I mean, it maybe maybe is not quite as rich as it would be if it was, you know, like a, a journal card you got in an act, actual subscription. But for me, this is absolutely fine. Okay, so I trimmed out my, or cut out my journal cards using a paper trimmer. And then for the heart and this little uh, hexagon, I just used, I just used regular scissors to cut those out. And then for this little uh, good stuff, I just use a one inch circle, circle punch there. So that's how I print out all of these pieces. And then I can, you know, attach them to a photo, pop this into a little pocket and boom, done. Um, the nice thing about having digital elements, number one, I could print these over and over. You know, if I really loved a particular journal card, I could print it over and over and over. The other thing is, I left these, all of these little chipboard sizes uh, as they came in the kit, but you can enlarge these, make them, you know, really big or make them a lot smaller. You could print this out in a larger size, like a you know, six by eight, if you do that size of album, you could print that size bigger. So that's one of the benefits of using the digital kits is that you have the option to resize or recolor them if you like to do that. So anyway, I hope this little tutorial has been helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, just, uh, Leave your question in the comment and I'll try to get an answer to you. And as always, thank you for joining me and letting me share my projects with you. Have a great day, everyone.